All right, so talking about the warm-up. So we have this basketball, basketball player. He gets fouled while shooting, so you get two free throws. And each free throw is worth one point. So what would be the equation that shows the probability of getting one point an equation that, and an equation that shows the probability of getting two points? Yeah. He has, he has two opportunities, yeah. right? So he has two opportunities, and in each opportunity, he can, get one point. he can get one point. But we know in one of those opportunities, he must get zero, right? So we have so we have a zero probability in one of the chances because he misses. And then we add, what's the probability in the other one? Uh, for, um, one. Get, um, both points? Mm -hmm. um, I thought it was um, 25%. Oh, not, not both points, but yes. He has a half chance in the other one. So his probability of getting one point is a half chance. Now, I add here these two probabilities because it's an either or. He either makes the next first one and misses the second, or he misses the first one, makes the second one. So the next one's a little bit different. The next one, he has, what's the probability of making uh, a free throw? He either can make it or miss it. So he has a half chance. But then he has another half chance. So there's a quarter or one-fourth theoretical probability of him making both chances. So he can make it and make it. He can miss it and make it. He can miss and miss, or he can make it and then miss it. So based upon that, that's where you get your one out of four. Okay? There are four total outcomes. He only has the ability to get one. So we know that free throwing has a lot of skill involved and all that, but we're not looking at that. We're just looking at the theoretical probability um, of the make and make option. Yeah? Why did you multiply one half and one half from zero? Okay. This is what I'm going to get to. So this is called a compound event where one thing must happen and the other thing must happen. You get that? So it's this must happen and that must happen. So when that is the case, I multiply. Those are called sequential events. This and then that. This is different. This is, well, it's either this or that. So come over here. I want to show you yesterday. When we had those two dice and we had all these combinations, Preston, okay, for our dice, we had 21 combinations, right? So we said, based on those 21 combinations, you had a 3 out of 21 chance to get a 6, 3 out of 21 to get a 7, and a 3 out of 21 to get a an 8. Now, what are the chances of you getting either, and that's the key word, either a 6, 7, or 8? I take, yes, because I take those and I add those together. What are your chances of getting... A 6, then a 7. So I go a 6, then a 7. So in order. I would go 321s, which is actually 1 7th, right? Times 
I have a 149th chance of getting this, then that. It's not an either or. Does that make sense? An either or means I could get a six, a seven, or an eight. What's the chance of getting one of those? That's what the file shot is saying. This is what is the chances of him making this or that? Yeah? Okay, so that's another way to write this would be he has a one fourth chance. He has a one fourth chance of making. Okay? And possibly make and he has another one fourth chance, which is that. Whoops, and I add those and that's a two fourths. So the when you multiply probabilities is when it's sequential, when it's saying this event, then that event, then that event, and I have to multiply those events to find my total probability. If it asks, hey, what about these, what's the chances of these three events happening? Then I would take those events and I add them together and see what my probability of this, that, or that. Okay. And there's a distinction there, so you're going to have to um, make sure you know that distinction. Any questions about this piece here? What about the tossing two coins at the same time? We did that this morning. What would I write down here? So I'm tossing two coins at the same time. So I'm writing an equation that shows the probability of getting a match. What are my outcomes? What outcomes could I get? Okay, tails, tails, heads, heads, tails, heads, heads, tails. So just by writing down those outcomes, I know I have a 50% chance of getting a match. Right there. Um, so if I'm tossing two coins... I have a half chance, okay, of getting that outcome. Another way to look at it is I would have a half chance times a half chance. So this would be my probability in my outcomes plus my probability times my outcomes, which actually equals two. That's a little harder to explain how to do that. But you get this piece here. Questions about that? What I do want you to understand is that showing your outcomes is going to help you uh, determine your winning strategy. Okay, So you can figure out your winning strategy if you can look at your outcomes. You're going to need to know that today because today we're going to be designing our own simulation. Um... Okay, go ahead, um, talk to your partner, and work through question seven. This was your homework. If you have your homework, just open it up. I'm not going to come around and look at it today. But you can go around um, and check. Talk about those three, um, these four scenarios, and which one makes sense and why. Landon, work with Lexi. I know. I'm doing it all at once now. A little bit. So what are you, what are your outcomes? Yeah. So let's roll the number cube and toss. If the number cube is even, so I get even for the number cube. And then what's my second outcome? Odd. Okay. 
then I had an even and. Sorry, it's not a. I toss a coin. So this is even with the cube, and then I toss a coin, and it could be heads. Even, toss a coin, it could be tails. Odd, and I toss a coin, it could be heads. Odd, I toss a coin, it could be tails. So, F, I'm listing F here. I have four outcomes. Even, roll the dice, I get a two, four, six, boom, golden. Flip the coin, I get a heads. When that happens, what do we get? Pizza. So, what are my chances of getting pizza? One fourth. So I have a one fourth chance of getting pizza. I got four outcomes. One of those works. Next, um, if the number cube is odd and the coin is tails, odd tails, what happens here? I get to eat a burrito. What's my choice? What's my what's my probability of eating a burrito? One fourth. Because again, I have four outcomes. One of those, I eat a burrito. So what happens to these? I do it again. Is this a fair game? Yes. Yes. Why is it fair? Steve, why is this fair? Because it's random. It is random. Good. Right. The, my, my two desired outcomes, my two desired outcomes both have equal probability of one fourth. Whoa, that was crazy. Whoa, hold up. Whoa. Oh. That's totally G. Okay. So I have a one fourth probability here to get pizza and a one fourth probability here of getting a burrito. And if I roll these other two, I get to roll again. So it's either I'm getting a burrito or a pizza. But G makes sense if you just don't want to eat burritos at all. G doesn't even think of it. But it doesn't have, but ready? Is, the question isn't, does it make sense? The question says, is it fair? No, Which, fair. So there, that's what you need to focus on, not what you want to focus on, but actually what the question asks you to focus on. No, you pick F. Um, so it's just F. Okay, F is the only fair game. Next, I would like you to work with very similar. Work with your tape. Work with your table partner on this one. Preston. Focus on that. kids are deciding what to do after school. Jake wants to play video games. Carl wants to see a movie. John wants to ride their bikes. So they got to pick a fair way. So which is fair? D. Neither. Okay. Um, none of these are fair? No. No, B is fair. So you don't think any of them are? I don't think so. Why is A not fair then? Because like you have to get all three to match and then only two for the other one. C does not make sense. But tell me, why is this not fair? Because they don't have the same probability. What what, what's the probability that they have? Two, like two thirds. Oh, um, he's trying so hard to prove his I know. I know. So, ready? Right? Right? Let's look at the outcomes. Because it's harder to get three than two. Yeah, what well, you said. Okay, it is hard to get three than two. Let's look at the outcomes so we know what the 
videos because this is what you're going to be doing today. You're going to be designing a game, but you need to show me the probability okay, and the outcomes. So I have a heads, 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 tails, 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 heads, heads, tails, tails, heads, and then tails, heads, tails. There we go. Okay. Heads, tails, heads. Okay, and then I go heads, heads, tails, heads, tails, tails, heads, tails, heads. All right, so there you go. How many chances are there? Eight. Eight. So now we're talking about equal probability. So if I am the if I am video games in A, I have to get all three. What's my probability? Yeah, well, it's not that. It's not one eighth, guys. It doesn't say it has to be all heads. It just says it has to be all matching. So it's two eighths. He has a one fourth chance, where these guys have a three eighths chance, right? Two heads, two heads, two heads. Three out of eight. Okay, so you must today, when we go on to this next section where you're designing your own, part of what you have to do welcome back. Part of what you have to do, okay, is you have to you just you get, you're like you didn't even know what was going on in the room. That's why I said welcome back. Uh, okay. Because I stopped talking and you kept staring off in space for like eight seconds before you realized that anything was happening. Okay, so um, it's okay. It's okay. Just try to focus more. It's all I'm asking you to do. Okay? So today when you're doing your simulation, you're creating your own, you need to list the outcomes. You can't have like a million outcomes because you can't list them all. So you need to create a game that has a limited number of outcomes where I can show the probability of what the outcomes are. I know what my desired outcomes are. Here, if I was a video game kid, I'd want the desired outcome of that. But we need to make sure that it's fair. You'll see. We're going to get to it today. Um, yeah, and all the others, that is not fair. B is fair. And a spinner would be fair if what? If they were all one-third, right? One third, one third. But that spinner is definitely not there. That's not equal probability. Um, what I would like you to do, okay, go ahead, 3.4. You grabbed it at the door. It's on the back side of 3.3. Three. Pull that out, flip it over, and read it, please. Yep. Go ahead and read. 3.4, analyzing a game. I will explain more about it. Have you ever figured out a strategy for winning a game? Yeah. Cheating. Oh. A -F -A Turn it over. 3.4.
So um, what's sounding familiar here? Tristan? Yeah. So we know that those, those two work together. And we know that those two work together in what we call um, the law of large numbers. The more we do it, the more that these two come together, right? They come closer together. They become, the experimental data will become more like the theoretical data. Um, what about down here? And you guys will need to add this dash because it didn't add it. So I have the probability of, um, of an event. So here my event is tossing two coins. I have a one-fourth, right here, I have a one-fourth chance of getting tails, tails. And I have a one-fourth chance of getting heads, heads. So because of those events are not this and that, but they're what are the chances of either one happening, I add them together. And that one-fourth plus one-fourth equals one-half because one-fourth plus one-fourth is two-fourths. Two fourths equals one half. So you guys see that, Scott? I know, I know you just said it, but it's confusing of like how to tell them to add them. So the key is it will ask me what is the chances of this and that. So I take both probabilities to figure out the co the the total. When it's um, when I multiply, it will say. Like, what's the chances of these events happening in, like, sequence? It would be like this, then that, then that, as opposed to what are the chances of either of these happening? It's that either or. You'll hear the word either or or a lot. And if it says that, like, over there with what are the chances of getting a 6, 7, or 8, I add those probabilities together, and I get my 9 over... 21. If it said, what's the chances of getting a 6, then an 8, I multiply. I know, it is confusing, and that's the hardest part of what I'm trying to teach you guys. Um, today, you have an opportunity, you're going to create your own simulation. I'm going to show you a simulation to start that um, I'm not going to write it out as detailed as you will because I'm expecting you to write it more detailed than myself. But these are the rules or the things I want you to make sure you can answer and write down. So your game must have a desired outcome. My game okay, is drawing cards and my desired outcome is a four... Then a four. Okay, that makes you that makes you win. How many cards do you have? Hold on. Game must be a compound event. Explain your probability for each event. So let's come over here. So I have my probability. I have five cards. Two of those cards are going to be the cards that you want. So right off the bat, I have a two-fifth chance to get one of those two cards. Follow me? Then my second, which is you get to take again, one card is gone. So I go from five cards to four cards, but I still have one, the one card you want. So your total probability is two over 20, which is one out of 10. You have a one out of 10 chance of winning my game. I explain the first event. I explain the second event and explain the total probability of happening. Now to go back, I'm not saying... What are my chances of getting this or that? It's this, then that. So these are in order, and when they're in order, you multiply. Okay? Um, I don't want to, can, that was for the accelerated kids. So that would explain, that's the, um, the second piece that you need to have in your creating your own simulation is the compound event. You need to explain each event. So I've written down the probability over there. I didn't write the explain, but I want you to write two-fifths chance. This is why. Game must be random. Drawing cards. 
picking a card. Is that random? Yeah. Yep. Okay. So I would say uh, drawing cards is a random event. Rolling dice is a random event. Pulling blocks out of a bucket, random event. Um, flipping a coin, random event. So those events are random. Your game must have a way to win. That goes back to my desired outcome, Patrick. Seat down. Okay, so I, I do have a way to win. Um, you must be playing to win something. So we're playing to win a homework pass. Yeah. Now you, you're not playing for, but you get to make it up. Wait. Okay, so you could be playing to win, uh, to win a ski trip versus a Bahamas trip versus just have have fun with it. Okay. Okay. Yeah, me and my teacher salary. I got all your trips. And yeah, you work with the table partner. And then um, you must you must show your outcomes. So I'm going to start. So my first outcome would be four four. Five four. Six, four, four, Jack. Okay, so I'm writing down all of the possible outcomes from drawing these cards. Okay, how many outcomes are there? 20. Okay, so I need to write down all 20. Two of them are the outcomes I want. King, then king, or king, then king. Okay. Um, just for fun, let's see what we got. How lucky are you, bird? Not lucky. Wah, wah. Go right here. Oh, yeah, I'm going to shuffle. Mm. Kayla. Woo. Uh -huh. Kayla. Mm. No. Wah, wah. 